Thank you. We just make a start, so we start on time. It's now quarter past 11. Uh, you're all very welcome. Thanks for all of you for attending this uh, breakout session. My name is Mark Kelly. I work in the Department of Building and Civil Engineering. I'm just chair of this um, <coughs> session today. Um, we have a number of speakers, excellent speakers on sort of different issues. The first one up is going to be on BIM, followed by a discussion on resource efficiency, which is an area of research that we're carrying out in the Building and Civil Department. And finally, discussion on the future trends of accessibility. So first up, I'd just like to introduce Mark Costello, who's the Director for BIM in RPS. Mark has over 20 years' experience of large infrastructural projects at all stages, and has given a number of presentations in Ireland and in the UK on BIM from an engineering perspective. Mark is currently managing BIM integration as a mainstream component of major infrastructure, pharmaceutical, healthcare, and educational projects. He's a member of a multi-party BIM committee in the UK, which has been instrumental in driving improved integration and collaboration across entire project teams, and which has identified and brought value to all the parties. So I'd like to invite Mark up. Just one thing, we'll have questions at the end to the panel. Um, it's easier just from our organization. Mark? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, I was asked to come here and talk a little bit about project delivery through BIM. And I suppose I'm going to start off by saying we certainly don't know or don't claim to know everything there is about BIM or BIM Level 2 or delivery of, of all aspects in that environment. But what I will say is that we have been working um, on elements of BIM uh, for a good number of years. Um, and as far back as I would say, probably one of the first projects I worked on in, in that area was uh, the Southeastern Motorway, or what's now commonly known as, as uh, the completion of the M50 in Dublin, uh, the SCM. And, and, and back then we were we were working in uh, probably lonely BIM, you know, delivering elements of projects in a BIM environment, even though we weren't using uh, the term BIM back then. Okay, so uh, I'm a technical director with RPS, and I'm here with two of my colleagues, Jared Nicholson and Mark Morley, both the managers uh, on the project uh, with us in our Galway office. And I suppose over the last number of years, uh, I have helped with the lads here to develop our BIM capabilities within RPS as part of an active BIM working group, uh, with the result that we're working on a number of new, new projects in a, BIM, in a BIM environment um, in Ireland and in the UK. Very quickly, I, I give a, a brief outline about ourselves, RPS, and, and BIM and the, and, and the workings of the BIM environment. The key drivers as we found them, um, most, most of which are probably since late 2012, early 2013. Uh, the current BIM requirements in Ireland and, and, and how they're affecting uh, uh, our present day tenders. Uh, the CPD enablers um, and our experience of them and our BIM journey to date. The collaboration uh, with, with other consultants, contractors and uh, education, uh, GMIT, NUIG, NUIG and others um, in relation to working in the BIM environment. BIM planning, uh, BIM development and, and a sample of our BIM projects uh, a few results and a quick animation at the end it was pulled together thanks to the lads very quickly last night just to give some sample of the sort of projects we're working on. Uh, the image you see there on the right is just uh, an extract uh, with uh, big maps in the background. It's just an extract of one of our models just taken out to give you a flavour of uh, uh, the type of uh, one of the projects that we're working on in the UK. Okay, so a little bit about us and RPS. We, we employ over 5,000 people uh, across our group, uh, from Ireland, the UK, the Netherlands, and, and beyond. And so since 2010, we have undertaken projects in over 125 countries across six continents. A little bit closer to home, we employ roughly 580, 600 people um, in, in our Irish operation. And in Galway currently, we have just over 80 people now employed in our local Galway office here 
our pitch was set up in uh, back in 2001, I think. A number of us came, came from Dublin. Okay, so we were multi multidisciplinary uh, in our approach, and I suppose we we um, we offer services from planning right through to environment, waterways, water, uh, marine, energy, transport, all the way across the field there, as you can see. And I suppose you know we need to provide these services in an integrated and a coordinated fashion, and BIM was always going to help us uh, to do this. To date, we have delivered over 50,000 square meters of building projects uh, in the BIM environment, uh, most of which since probably 2013. Anything prior to that would be what's referred to now probably as uh, lonely BIM, really, uh, you know, elements of BIM. We're, we're currently undertaking BIM design process on a number of large infrastructure projects in the UK, uh, either directly or indirectly for uh, clients such as Transport Scotland, Highways Agency, a uh, number of uh, contractors on DB schemes, Scotia Gas. And we have standards and protocols in place uh, as recommended by uh, BS 1192 and PAD 1192 uh, 1 to 5. And, and, and for any of you that have been following this BIM journey, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see that you know, the PAD 1192 1 to 5, you know, the, the most recent standard has only come out in draft format. Uh, in terms of security, so it's 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 a work in progress, and um, that's probably one of the difficulties that companies like ourselves um, have have to deal with on a daily basis in terms of uh, making the, the the change from the traditional to this new collaborative uh, BIM environment. So what is BIM? We're all we're all well used to. Um, hearing all the definitions, but one of the things that I don't particularly like about it is, is, is the word B or building in, in the title. And there's very little there to suggest anything about working uh, in an infrastructure uh, setting. So some might even say it's an out-of-date term. But it's best described as three separate but linked processes, modeling being the business process, the model itself being the output, and management is using the model for a project life cycle process. <coughs> But the most important thing uh, on that slide there is that it will alter the entire way in which a project is procured, uh, delivered, constructed, and operated. And, and in terms of operation, you know, a lot of the projects we work on now, you know, we're involved in the initial uh, design of the project, uh, but we're also involved in terms of the ONM element, uh, you know, which which uh, might end up being over a 20-year period. Uh, and having developed a BIM model. Uh, uh, initially would support uh, that process right through. So the key drivers. Well, I suppose the key driver for for RPS uh, when we when we started looking at this initially uh, on the back of the end of the Celtic Tiger, if you like, over here, was to secure uh, employment for our staff and to win work outside of Ireland. And to do that, when we started looking. Uh, at new opportunities uh, across in the UK. Uh, one of the first reports we came across was the cover there on the right is the UK uh, Government Construction Strategy 211. And this was all about developing standards and enabling members of the supply chain to work in a collaborative uh, fashion facilitated by BIM. So BIM itself isn't the requirement, but really it's all about collaboration. A requirement for fully collaborative 3D then by 216, and you know other European countries and the US government stipulating similar requirements. So this was always going to provide opportunities for a company like RPS to work on major projects outside of Ireland at a time when when things were a little bit quiet here. Just in relation to to Ireland, and again I just pulled these out at random uh, last night when I was looking at this. In advance of any requirement at the moment, uh, 216 UK or otherwise, this is what we are seeing uh, on a daily and weekly basis coming into tenders here. So, you know, in advance of 216, we're seeing in, in uh, individual uh, uh, paragraphs relevant creeping into the requirement here the use of full level two collaborative bid on the project. And, you know, having companies like ourselves having to fill out bid capability questionnaires. So, this 
is a new requirement, if you like, that's been put in there by statutory bodies or other in advance of any uh, overall uh, or overall nursing requirement. Uh, just interesting, Paul Shilcock, uh, I met him recently in Dublin, one of the authors of Health 1192, and he had a very interesting slide, lies, damn lies, and statistics in relation to current compliance uh, and delivery with level two men in, in, in Ireland and the UK. So everyone, of course, is saying that they're delivering level two BIM. Uh, most don't know what level two BIM is. And, and, and when we talk about level three, uh, they're still writing uh, and working on, on that level. So what really comes through and what we're finding on some of our projects in the UK is that certification will come. So you will be asked at some stage, maybe not in the next year, but I would say in the next 18 months to two years, you will see certification creeping in. So you'll have to, projects will, uh, will need to be certified at level two. It will take time, but, but, that, but that will come. Enablers. <coughs> so I suppose our vision, uh, and if we're going to talk about our experience of projects in this environment today, we, we, um, we set out to develop our internal capabilities to elevate ourselves into a market leading position. And to do this, I suppose, adopting a top-down approach, uh, and for any of you that have attended any of the talks in relation to BIM over the last period of time, they will all talk about having a top-down approach in place, uh, and not to look at, uh, you know, whether it be training, in isolation, software, recruitment. They all need, it needs to be a top-down approach. So we put a, a strategy statement in place, setting out our vision for, the, for our company, uh, from 2014 to 2018, supported by the human resources strategy, which would focus on recruitment, uh, training for existing staff, and a BIM and what we call a BIM and technical services strategy. And that's something that enables us to deliver our multidisciplinary projects in, a, in an efficient manner uh, as required. Um, staff themselves identified uh, training needs through our internal appraisal process which uh, it's a yearly, a yearly event, but again, it, it's almost twice, twice a year now because we found that once a year wasn't enough. And we set up a BIM working group in early 2012 uh, to integrate uh, BIM into our way of working. The key part of that was uh, identifying um, particular projects that we could work in a pilot basis and, and deliver. Our BIM working group, of which I chaired, uh, presented the need for focus BIM development to the management board in 2013. I drew the short straw and was made responsible to, to lead and deliver the initiative. And the upskilling uh, and the recruitment of suitably qualified BIM personnel got underway. In collaboration with our colleagues from IT here, uh, a new part time higher diploma in engineering um, has been worked on and, and developed over time. And the delivery of, of this diploma uh, commenced on a pilot basis, which been on a pilot basis uh, since 2013. So we've been working with the college here uh, on that, and it's been, uh, it's been very beneficial. Collaboration, let's just give you an idea of it. Uh, just looking at the modules there, virtual mod mo uh, modeling, looking at fundamentals, whether it be structure, architecture, so on, uh, infrastructure, um, looking at um, MEP collaboration, and then uh, going on for people that might want to do level eight, uh, a research project uh, through industry. Graduate recruitment, I suppose, can't emphasize enough um, the importance of having uh, the availability uh, and the open door policy uh, that, that has been shown to us uh, at the local third level institutions here, and the availability of first class honors graduates uh, from both GMIT and NUIG has been instrumental to us um, delivering projects, uh, particularly across the water over the last two years. And class on the right there, uh, uh, both civil and architectural, uh, coming out and supporting our projects now um, uh, across our disciplines. BIM development planning. So what is it? It's it's a framework to enable companies, RPS and others, to implement BIM technologies and deliver projects in a collaborative BIM environment. 
Stage one is the organization, the top down approach that I talked about. And stage two is project planning and support over, over the period of time. Uh, why would companies do this? They do it to help them open new markets uh, in Ireland and the UK in particular uh, with regards to the upcoming 2016 deadline for uh, working in a collaborative STEM environment. <coughs> Improved communication, collaboration among uh, team members, fuel problems related to overruns, cost scheduling, and the availability, uh, the ability to um, reliably uh, deliver projects faster, leaner, uh, um, as required. Okay, so we, we set out to, to integrate them into all sectors in our business. And looking at the top four there, engineering, environment, planning, and project management, uh, BIM is, is an integral part uh, of delivery of projects across our business. Uh, and we, we cross-mentor and train all our new graduates and existing staff now to work across our section so that if one section is quite, people can transfer to another section. That's what we have found as, as worked for us in particular uh, right through the downturn. And what we're finding is, is working with us on the larger projects where you know, we might have an involvement uh, whether it's uh, you know from the planning from the constraints, the planning, the public consultation, right through to uh, environmental, ecology, uh, temporary works, uh, as it's whatever is required, and people have the skills to work there. So we have a direct with responsibility for them. We have new roles over and above what would be considered the traditional. So you know we're all aware of the design engineer, the senior design, um, project ecologists, all these things. But there's new New roles for people creeping in, STEM managers, STEM coordinators, STEM engineers, STEM models. So they seem to have that word BIM in front of everything. So we can wear numerous hats, but you must have the skills and, and in time the qualifications to work um, in terms of the requirements that we come forward uh, in terms of pre PEP requirements, etc. Um, and again, BIM being central to the delivery of our projects. Stage two. Well, stage two is really based on, on, on PADS 1192, that document on the left. And I would say to people that if you're going to read any document in relation to BIM, read that one. Um, there's a lot of information out there, but that's probably the one that people should get uh, somewhat familiar with. On the right, it's just an example of, of an execution plan we have prepared for a project in the UK. And supporting that document, that uh, pre BP, uh, you'd have a uh, what's called a level of model definition, which basically sets out the level of detail that you will include in your model that you'll be handing over. And again, those levels one to five um, are all outlined in figure 20 in PAS 1192 that I've just referred to there. <coughs> Collaborative film projects. Uh, we're currently working uh, on this TV project, um, Design, Build, Operate, with our project partners, Grovey, Lamy, Lagan, uh, in Scotland. Uh, the junction you're looking at here is uh, is Rate Junction, the large junction between um, pretty much halfway in Motherwell, halfway between uh, Edinburgh and Glasgow. It's currently an upgraded junction, uh, soon to be a free flow junction. And uh, we have in place at the moment a 3D coordinated bin model um, across across the companies, uh, including the alignment structures, drainage, so on. Um, a common data environment for this project is four projects. And these, what I'm showing you here are just images taken from our BIM models. The images we showed you there is, is one that we took out of. Uh, we, we, we combined our lighting model uh, with our overall model, and we were able to show that we, we didn't require uh, lighting in this particular area. So just to, to give you an idea of that. Design outputs, traditionally drawings like this would have been produced using MX or whatever, uh, right, you know, MX, CAD, XREST, all the rest of it. Now these are the type of drawings we're pulling straight from um, uh, a model environment. When we talk about the model environment, we're talking about, you know, you might have a, a civil 3D model, you might have a rivet model, a robot model, uh, and eventually you'll get to your coordinated uh, in model and your shared model across platforms. Okay, design outputs from BIM. What, what we have noticed is that everyone has a different requirement. So if we're talking to some of our contractors, 
they, they want to know all about mass hall, um, site requirements, cut and fill volumes, uh, departmentalization, uh, four and five B scheduling. So what we're seeing on the ground at the moment in relation to our projects is that different people are having different requirements uh, within the BIM environment. And, and what we're trying to do is meet those particular requirements uh, as we go. Structural BIM, uh, sample here of one of our projects in Dublin, uh, large pharmaceutical plant. It's just shy of 35,000 square meters. And again, here we have an integrated design and project outputs using uh, rigorous robot structural analysis. And for this project, uh, I think which is included in your animation later on, that uh, all drawings and quantities extracted uh, from an integrated uh, BIM model. At one stage, we had 15 people working within this one uh, BIM model at one stage uh, during the year. BIM for public consultation. I put this up here because people talk about what's BIM, uh, BIM in the environment. Um, what you see in the background is still the back, the free stuff. When you talk about the free stuff and the expectation now to provide free stuff in advance of, of any award or project. Uh, what you see here is developed in a written model and it's just combined at the correct order uh, with Google Maps. And, and, and it's this sort of output that uh, we're, we're seeing change uh, from the traditional to the new. Uh, more and more. Built for planning, uh, UHG, new hospital war block here in Norway, again, all the planning drawings, um, planning and tenor drawings, I think, were extracted uh, from the new model for this particular project. Built for traffic management, uh, that's one of the projects in Scotia uh, in the UK that we're currently working on. And again, without going into too much detail on it, uh, these were images extracted from a working new model for traffic modeling and some public consultation in the evenings. Um, with the client. Point cloud is something that we have uh, got involved in. We have survey teams um, with the ability to capture and post process point cloud. And it's just interesting for um, if you look at section 10.2 in PAS 1192, there's a very important, very small but very relevant paragraph in there that talks about the appropriate surveys such as point cloud um, or LIDAR uh, shall be provided to verify the completeness of an as built or constructed model. So again, you know, from the very beginning to to the end, our 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 um, our, our as a phased uh, requirement on large scale projects, we're seeing um, we're, we're seeing point cloud come in. That's one of our vans on the road collecting the data. And, and again, uh, in this particular instance, it's for uh, network support in large infrastructure projects. Results. Um, I put this up, probably not realizing that not everybody is involved as me at the stage. So, uh, somebody told me I need to update the paper. Uh, some, some results. Um, what we have seen in terms of um, our journey from traditional to a working grid environment. Um, so we, we are moving to a fully collaborative 3D BIM. But at the same time, we have a fair number of projects that are still very much uh, embedded in the traditional sense. So the transition has been difficult and matching uh, I don't mind saying matching the younger people with the newer skills and some of the older people with the, with the experience has been a challenge, but that, that, that's what we have, we have had to do. Uh, flexible and industry oriented higher diploma uh, underway with, with, with GMIT again, um, hopefully to, to get that rolled out as, 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 as soon as possible. Uh, the upskilling of our staff and the recruitment of over 60 staff uh, again, locally over the last two years. New business opportunities in Ireland and the UK uh, with overseas work going in the last year uh, at a value of over 9 million euros. It was interesting to hear in the previous talk about people, uh, new graduates, uh, having to, to move uh, you know, from the west of Ireland maybe to the UK. We have 80 people now working here locally in Galway, uh, the majority of which are working on projects. Uh, either in Scotland, uh, Yorkshire, Birmingham, London, uh, from our local Broadway office. Some travelling over maybe once once a week, uh, once a fortnight type of thing typically uh, to support those projects. And again, I put the bottom line in there, transformation to level C of engineers are. Again, that's just recognition that some of uh, what we have put in place since 2013 um, uh, has helped us move to a new level and we, we were recently recognized uh, last November for that with, with um, uh, the shortlist of engineers Ireland. 
just show this very quickly. Let me play. Just give you a small, small sample of, of what Live Code does as some of our projects last night. So we're based in Merview here in Galway. Uh, very close, let's say halfway between uh, NUIT and GMIT. You didn't think that was going to be up there, right? Again, that's that's uh, an extract here from a structural bin model from a uh, pharmaceutical building we're working on in Dublin. And some of the data we just pulled out very quickly last night to give you an idea. <laughs> so as I can't overemphasize enough in terms of the skill base uh, and the change is that people now require skills to work within an environment. Um, so whether it be Civil 3D, uh, Revit, Robot, 3D Max, Navisworks, all of these things, um, the environment is different uh, from, from where we were coming from, a traditional uh, CAD background. And again, we're mixing the model with the free stuff, i.e. the mapping in the background is just brought into board. Okay, so I think we're taking questions at the end, so I think anything else we can do that. All right, no problem.